indie games, especially those that get their start through Kickstarter and other crowdfunding sites, are a double-edged sword at times. On the one hand, the developers have much more creative freedom to make the game they want without having to please people like publishers, marketing directors, and shareholders. But on the other hand, not having as much resources means a lack of quality control and the fact that there's not a guarantee you'll even get a decent product at the end of all this, or even a return on investment. At first glance, this didn't seem to apply to Mighty No. 9, but with it being a game inspired by the classic Mega Man games, made by series creator KJ Inafune himself, and it was being made at a time where Capcom had essentially given up completely on the Blue Bomber, so the announcement of this Kickstarter project gave us a fair amount of hope that we'd get a decent Mega Man-like game again. Then came the announcements of missed deadlines, delays, people not getting the Kickstarter rewards they were promised, poor management of money, and of course the hilariously bad marketing where you were instructed to make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on prom night. Then when the game finally got released, rather than being released with a glorious fanfare and shooting to extreme heights like we all hoped when it was first announced, it instead was released to the sound of a wet fart and it flopped like a dead fish. Honestly, a lot of the footage just speaks for itself. We have levels that seem to be lacking shading, with most objects just being flat colours, explosions that resemble cheese puffs more than a wave of fiery death, silted and jerky animations, character models lacking any sort of expression, and lackluster voice acting. The gameplay front isn't that much better, as while shooting feels fine, jumping and even just moving around feels rather stiff. Now, I know that the earlier Mega Man games had this problem too, but they came out in the 1980s where technology wasn't as advanced as today. Mighty No. 9, meanwhile, came out in 2016, so there's really no excuse. There's also a ton of other issues dotted here and there, such as the stealth level, where stealth is so optional it doesn't even matter, and the crippling lack of content for the price tag, but the main thing is that this game copies so much from the classic Mega Man series that it's not even funny. Everything down to the story, the main character design, the gameplay, even the level design, all feels like they lifted it straight from Mega Man 1 and just changed a couple of things to avoid legal troubles. Now, I get that it's supposed to be homage or spiritual successor to Mega Man, but the final product feels less like either of those, and more like a blatant rip-off of a beloved gaming series. The one silver lining out of all of this is that after this game released, Capcom seemingly realized that people actually love Mega Man, and gave us the phenomenal Mega Man 11 two years later. Sometimes it takes the worst in order to get the best. <laughs>